there you go. It was actually able to crack the password hash. How much time did it take? It, it actually took two seconds. It actually took two seconds to go through this whole world list, which contains 14,300,000 plus unique passwords. Two seconds. That's all it took. And it was able to successfully crack the password. In this video, I'm going to perform a really interesting experiment. How fast can I crack a password using my Ethereum mining rig? For those of you who don't know, I built an Ethereum mining rig back in June 2021, I guess. So it is basically a medium range Ethereum mining rig. It has five graphic cards. I'll also list out the graphic cards. It has a RTX 3060, a RTX 2060 and three 1660 supers. So I'd say all five of these graphic cards are moderately powered. And of course, 3060 is the most powerful among these. So my plan is to actually try to use the computing power of all these five graphic cards combined in order to, sorry, in order to crack passwords, like password hashes. Now, the reason I came up with this idea is because mining crypto is very much similar to cracking passwords. If you think about it in crypto mining, you're basically trying to brute force a special number, which enables you to create or mine a block. And when it comes to password cracking, you're also trying to brute force a password such that the hash that you're trying to crack gets matched with the output of the password that you are passing into the hashing function. If it makes any sense, if you want to know more about password hashing, how it works and all that stuff. I made a video very recently on my channel, so I'll link it down in the description and also in the suggested cards above. So I suggest you go ahead and check it out. It will definitely give you good understanding about what password cracking is and how hackers manage to crack passwords. So go ahead and give it a watch before you continue this video. So this experiment is actually going to be a really interesting one because you are actually going to see the time it took for my mining rig to crack certain types of password hashes. Now, I'm obviously going to try this with different hashing algorithms. I'm going to start with a relatively insecure or easy to crack hashing algorithm like MD5. And then I'm going to move or raise the levels to a more secure one, like for example, SHA-256, which is considered to be the best security practice according to the current security standards. So before conducting the experiment, I want to plan it properly. So I'm going to do two type of password cracking attacks. The first one is going to be a dictionary attack. And then the second one is going to be a brute forcing attack. Now, many people might actually think that these two mean the same basically, but they're actually pretty different. They're almost the same. I mean, the concept is the same, but the way these attacks are implemented actually varies a little bit. So let's talk about that before moving on with the video. First of all, Dictionary attack. What is it? Well, in dictionary attack, you basically have a list, a list of passwords, a list of potential passwords in a file. So this file is known as word list and it's, it's a pretty popular term when it comes to password cracking. So a word list is basically a list of potential passwords, which you will keep trying until you are able to crack the password that you are trying to crack. In other words, you are going to take each word from this word list or each password from this word list. You're going to apply the same hashing algorithm uh, that was applied to the target hash, which you were trying to crack. And you're going to check the output obtained with the target password hash that you want to crack. So if at any point these hashes match, it means that you have successfully cracked your password. And that's about it. That's how dictionary attacks work. Anyway, Secondly, now comes brute forcing attack. So in brute forcing attack, you're basically generating all the permutations of a given character set and you are checking all these permutations against the target hash that you want to crack. For example, let's say you're trying to crack a password, which is three characters long. And you also know that uh, all the characters are lowercase alphabets. So in that case, when you're trying to brute force this particular password with this given criteria, you can just generate all the permutations of the given character set, which is in this case, lowercase alphabet. So uh, the attack goes like this. First, it generates AAA because all the characters are lowercase and the length is also three. And then it goes to AAB 
A C A D A E. So it basically generates all the permutations, all the possible uh, strings from a given character set. So anyway, these are the two type of attacks that I'm going to experiment in this video. So the tool that I'm going to use in this video to perform these experiments is called Hashcat. So Hashcat claims itself to be the world's most powerful password recovery tool or password cracking tool. I mean, it's, it's actually pretty fast, trust me. It is written in kernel level, so it is supposed to be fast. So I'll be using that. And one other alternative to Hashcat would be John the Ripper, which is also a very popular tool, but we'll be using Hashcat in this video. All right, so here I have my mining rig installed on my Google Chrome remote desktop. So I can basically RDP into my mining rig using a remote desktop and I'll be able to use my mining rig from my personal computer like this without any issues. So there you go. This is my mining rig and I already have Hashcat installed. I'm using Hashcat 5.1.0. All right. Now first let's start with dictionary attack where we actually give Hashcat a word list or a potential list of passwords and tell Hashcat to, you know, try to crack the password from this word list. Okay, so for the word list, I have this word list, a very popular word list indeed, known as rocku.txt, and it is a 133 MB, and let's actually check the number of unique passwords or number of lines it has. So I'll say cat rocku.txt WCL, and there you go, it actually has 14,344K unique passwords. So yeah, it is a pretty, pretty big uh, word list. And also it's, it's very popular because uh, all the passwords that are in this word list are actually gathered or combined from previous data breaches. So we know that these are actually very commonly used passwords. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'll first open up rocku.txt in my notepad and I'll scroll to the end and I'll just type in like a random password, something like that. So the reason why I, I type this password almost at the end of this word list is because I want to know how much time my mining rig takes to actually traverse through this word list, which is to actually go through each password in this word list and compare it with the, you know, with the target hash that you, that we want to crack. It's essentially going to go through 14 million plus passwords, uh, before coming to this particular line here. I'll save this, uh, this word list, and I'll copy this password, which is the password that I want to crack. And as I said, we'll start with the most insecure hashing algorithm, uh, which is going to be MD5. It is one of the um, most popular hashing algorithms, which is also considered insecure according to the current security standards. So I'm going to use this tool to generate a hash from an input. So I'll just paste my password here, and it's going to generate my my hash, uh, my MD5 hash. So this is going to be my target hash. This is the hash that I want to crack. So I'll go back to my mining rig. And what I'm going to do is I'll go into my hashcat folder and I'll actually save uh, this particular hash in a text file like this. And I'll name it as target underscore hash, it's no caps, target underscore hash dot txt. So the idea is to pass this particular text file which contains the target hash that we want to crack to Hashcat and ask Hashcat to crack the hashes inside this file. So yeah, let's go ahead and begin the experiment. I'm going to open my command prompt and I'm going to just cd into my Hashcat directory and I'll say hashcat.exe which is the Hashcat binary that I'll be using. And obviously I also have to tell Hashcat what is the type of hash that I want to crack. In this case, I know that the hash type that I want to crack is MD5. So I have to tell Hashcat that I wanted to crack MD5 hash. So you can actually find uh, all the hashes that Hashcat supports in this particular web page right here. Uh, in my case, I'm going with the plain MD5. It's just a plain MD5 hash. And the hash mode number for a plain MD5 hash is going to be zero. So over here, I'll just say dash M followed by zero. So in other words, I'm basically telling Hashcat that the target hash that I want to crack is hashed using the MD5 hashing algorithm. All right, now I'll just pass in the target hash.txt file, which contains my hash that I want to crack. And finally, I also have to pass it the word list because we're doing a dictionary attack. So I'll just come back to my word list directory, copy this, 
paste it here and I'll say rockq.txt. So I have my target hash and my world list. So let me go ahead and run this command. There you go. It says hash cat has started. Let me make it full screen. So it's currently initializing OpenCL runtime for all the devices. In other words, for all the graphic cards, all the five graphic cards that I have. So let's just wait for it to initialize it and then it will start its uh, dictionary attack. All right, so there you go. It has started the dictionary attack and it has ended the dictionary attack. Wait a minute. Did it, is it even successful? Yep, there you go. There you go. It was actually able to crack the password hash. How much time did it take? It, it actually took two seconds. It actually took two seconds to go through this whole word list, which contains 14,300,000 plus unique passwords. Two seconds. That's all it took. And it was able to successfully crack the password. There you go. So, I mean, that's obviously very impressive, but we also have to consider that we we have used a very insecure hashing algorithm called the MD5. And it's actually very easy to crack MD5 hashes. So although it's impressive, I can't say that I'm fully impressed with it yet. So let's actually go and repeat this experiment, but this time with a much, much stronger hashing algorithm. So according to the current security standards, SHA-256 is considered to be one of the most secure hashing algorithm. So in my next experiment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a SHA-256 password hash using the latest version of Django. Django, for those of you who don't know, is a very popular Python web framework, and it has an inbuilt functionality to generate a password hash from a plain text password, which is considered to be very safe because this is the latest version of Django. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, create a user. Uh, so I'll just come back to my terminal and I'll say users is equal to user dot object dot create user. Uh, and I'll say username is equal to, I don't know, test user. And the password is going to be uh, the same password, which I added to the end of Rocky. So let me go back to my Rocky.txt. There you go. This is the password. I will copy it and I'll paste the password here. So I'll hit enter. There you go. So now I have the password hash. I'll just say users dot password. There you go. This is the password hash that Django generated. It's actually a, a SSA256 password hash that Django generated uh, from this plain text password that I submitted. And also what's even more impressive is that this hash that is generated actually had 216,000 iterations, which in simpler words just means that this hash is very, very secure, very hard to crack because the, hash, the hashing algorithm, in this case, SHA-256, is applied 216,000 times on the plain text password. So if you want to decrypt or not decrypt, but dehash, this particular hashing algorithm, you have to do it 216,000 times and this applies for each and every password in the world list. So for every password in the world list, you're going to apply the SHA-256 216,000 times, which is like incredible. But let's see if, if my mining rig is able to do that and if so, how much time it takes to do that. So I'll just copy this password hash uh, and I'll replace, uh, I'll replace my target hash to this new hash and let me come back to hashcat. I'll clear the screen. I hope I can make this bigger, the screen, but I don't know why uh, my shortcuts just don't work in this RDP. But anyway, so I'm going to do again a hashcat.exe and this time I have to mention uh, a particular hash mode type. So I'll go back to this page and I'll search for Django here. And there you go. This is the exact type of hash that we're trying to crack. Django PBKDF2 SSA256. The hash mode is 10,000. So I'll just uh, copy that and I'll say 10,000 here as well because we want to crack SSA256 hash, which is generated by Django. And then I'll pass the target hash that I want to crack and the word list. Well, I'm going to use the same word list, which is in this particular directory. Rockq.txt. So let's see. I'm going to hit enter, initializing OpenCL runtime for all the devices. Let's just wait and see. Okay, so it seems like it started. 
and progress is around 5.83%, which means it is done going through 5% of the world list that we supplied. So as you can notice immediately, this is a lot more slower as compared to the MD5 hash that we did earlier, because as I said, this hashing algorithm is very secure. And also because we actually uh, gave it a hash that was hashed 216,000 times. So it's obviously going to be much harder to crack this hash. So I'll just pause the video here and I'll come back once this process is done, once the hash is cracked. All right, seems like it's done. If you can see here, it is actually able to successfully crack it, obviously. And the time it took is around nine minutes, 44 seconds. Now, don't tell me that's not impressive. We cracked a very, very, very secure SSA256 password hash in nine minutes, 45 seconds, considering that the password, that the actual password is located at the end of the word list. So it essentially means that Hashcat was able to go through the whole word list from top to bottom in around nine minutes, 44 seconds. Anyway, so that's about dictionary attack. Now it's time for brute force, brute forcing. Now, obviously, as you could imagine, it's going to be very much hard to perform a brute force attack compared to a dictionary attack. Obviously going to take a lot longer because we don't have a word list with us. In case of a brute force attack, we have to just keep generating values, keep generating strings as we move, but let's give it a try. First of all, obviously we'll start with the easy, easy thing, which is the MD5 hash. So let me actually try to generate a password right now. So this is the randomly generated password. I want the length to be just eight characters. We don't want to do much. I'm just removing symbols here. How about that? That looks good. So let's actually try with this thing, I guess. So it's of eight characters. It contains uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. I've eliminated symbols because that's just going to make it make the attack a lot more complex, a lot more time taking. So I'll use the same tool that I used earlier. This is the hash that I want to crack. I'll go back and I'll change my target hash to this particular hash. So before going on with the attack, let me actually show you the documentation of Hashcat. So in Hashcat, there exists brute forcing, but there exists another attack known as masking attack. It's basically very similar to brute forcing, but it's a lot more efficient than brute forcing. You can basically tell Hashcat which character sets to use. And if you know the exact length of the password that you're trying to crack and the type of characters used at certain positions in the target password, you can make use of mask attack to like increase the efficiency a lot. You can speed up the cracking process a lot if you have certain information about the password. So in this case, let's say the only information that we have about the password is that it is eight characters long and it contains uppercase letters, lowercase letters and numbers. And we know for a fact that it doesn't contain symbols. So I'll use hashcat.exe. The hash mode is going to be zero because we are um, performing our attack on a plain MD5 hash. And then I'll mention the target hash. So the attack mode is going to be three, which is the masking attack or the brute force attack. And now I can go ahead and define some patterns. So in this case, since I know that the password uh, has uppercase, lowercase, and digits. I'm going to say L for lowercase, U for uppercase, and D for digits. I know that the password is eight characters long, so I'll just just repeat that eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, that sounds perfect. So let me run this attack. Okay, so it's initializing the OpenCL runtime. Um, so I'm not sure uh, how much time this is going to take. Because honestly, I've never done a masking attack using Hashcat until now. This is the first time I'm doing it. So I have no idea how much time I should expect. I thought of pausing the video here, but I don't need to because it's already done, is it? Uh, let me actually make sure. Oh, it's not able to crack. It was not able to crack the password actually. It did not crack the password. I think maybe I've messed up something here. Okay, I think I know what I did wrong here. There is a small thing that I need to change in my command. So I need to put a question mark for every character set that I define here. I'm defining lowercase, uppercase, and as well as digit. Okay, so let me run this command now. 
So I guess I'll just pause the video here and I'll come back once this is done. Okay, so it's been like 24 minutes and it's still going. You can see the progress is around uh, 22, 23%. All right, look what we have. Status cracked and you can see here, it was actually able to crack our password. This is the plain text password that we have generated, remember? So it took around one hour, 24 minutes for Hashcat to crack this, which I think is pretty impressive because we did not make use of a word list in this case. We literally generated all the permutations, all possibilities um, of the given character set, which is uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and digits. And obviously considering that we know that the length of the password is eight characters, we were able to crack it in around one and a half hour, one hour, 24 minutes to be precise. And let's also not forget that the hashing algorithm used here is MD5, which is, as I said, easy to crack. But what if we use the SSA256 hashing algorithm, uh, which is generated by Django, which we have used previously in dictionary attack? How long would that take to crack a password like this? If you ask me to guess, I would say it would take like weeks to even months to crack the same password. Anyway, let's just give it a try, all right? Now let's run our brute force attack or our masking attack against this particular hash here. So let me clear the screen and let's try to run it again. Oh, actually, you know what? I need to change the hash type to 10,000. There you go. Obviously, it's going to take very, very, very longer than what it took right now. So I'm not going to like wait for it to end, wait for the password to be cracked. But we'll just see uh, what is the estimated time that Hashcat is giving us to, to crack this particular password hash using uh, brute force attack or masking attack. Okay, look at this. Time estimated is around 329 years, 343 days. I mean, obviously uh, that is in the worst case scenario, but the point here is that it's going to take a lot, lot, lot longer than what it took to crash an MD5 hash. So I just wanted to make this video to do this experiment to see if my mining rig, which is supposedly a very powerful machine because it's used to mine crypto, Ethereum in this case, whether it will be able to crack passwords faster. So I guess it's safe to say that my mining rig is definitely very, very, very faster than my normal PC, than my personal PC. And obviously if I keep increasing my hardware, like if I keep adding more graphic cards to my rig, it's going to be even more faster, obviously. And another thing that was also proved during this experiment is the hash algorithm or the hash type matters a lot. You just saw the difference um, in cracking an MD5 password hash versus cracking an SHA-256 password hash. It really matters. So if you are a developer, if you have the responsibility of creating apps, then you should also take the responsibility of handling your users' data securely. You need to use strong hashing algorithms like SHA-256 and you also have to make sure that you implement many rounds in this hashing algorithm so that it even makes the password hash even stronger. So even though if your app suffers a data breach sometime in the future and all your user data is compromised, it would be really, really hard for hackers to crack your users' password hashes and, you know, reveal their plain text passwords. Obviously, it also depends on the strength of the passwords that your users are using, but you have to do what you can do from your end to keep your user's data secure. So yeah, make sure that you do your research to see what is the best security practice according to the current security standards and make sure you use the same in your application while you're writing code. So yes, I guess that will be end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did find this experiment, this video interesting, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. If you are not yet a subscriber to my channel, please do hit that subscribe button and do not forget to turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.